and we're live guys what is up and welcome to another live session here on home grow tv guys this wednesday session is going to be absolutely packed as tonight guys we actually get to hang out and meet someone very special when it comes to breeding very very knowledgeable when it comes to genetics and someone extremely passionate when it comes to cannabis sorry guys i'm getting some feedback here really quick from my side let me get this turned off. I kept hearing myself in my ear, and that's not how we're supposed to start this live, guys. So anyway, as usual, guys, let me know who is here with us tonight live, guys, as everyone is tuning in. And please let me know what you guys got rolled up before we bring on tonight's special guest, guys. Right on. We got some smoke and designer runs here from Dan S. Let's go. Much love from New NZ. Is that New Zealand? No way, that is dope. And I think my camera might have just went, oh, oh, and we're back. My camera just went off for a sec, and we're back, guys. What is up? Welcome back. For those of you just tuning in, guys, we have a very, very special show planned tonight, guys. And in just a second, I'm going to bring out our guest as we let everyone else tune in. Hope everyone is well. What is up, my boy Alex? Is this Alex in the house here, Alex? Oh, that's a different Alex. We have my boy Alex here visiting from the UK, Dubai, He's in the house. We got my girl, Mama Sota, baby, who also wants to watch this live. We got a bunch of people tuned in from the world here tonight. So I think we get started. What's up, baby girl? Say what's up to everyone on the live. And I think we get started. So, yeah, New Zealand spots in here. That's sick, dude. That is awesome. All right, guys. So I want you to meet our special guest tonight. Carlitos, what is up, my bro? How you doing? Okay. What's up, Dakota? Everything good? Very, very good, my brother. I'm excited for tonight's interview with you, bro. We got a lot of amazing stuff to cover. Um, and we want to definitely start off with people who do not know you here watching the live. Let's give everyone just a little background on yourself, who you are, and what it is that you do in this industry of cannabis. For sure, brother. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm a big fan of, of your, you know, of your editing, of your style, of, of everything that you brought to, to to the content world that was very needed here, especially in Colombia. Um, my background pretty much is, uh, well, my name is Carlos, um, <clears throat> Carlos Vivas Jr. Um, pretty much I've been with cannabis for 15 years. Uh, I, I was raised in pretty much Miami, so my cannabis background pretty much gets formed in Miami and Florida, <clears throat> South Florida, so, you know, the origins of Triangle Kush, all those good, um, <laughs> the Hindu times TK, the origins of OG Kush, all that, you know, I, I come from <clears throat> from a, a peninsula that was very, very, very strict with its quality, um, and I had the, 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 um, the good fortune of being around very good growers and very good products from a very young age um, and then so that helped me out when obviously I came back to my father's hometown Colombia and pretty much I, I found out you know I fell in love with with Santa Marta's story you know with with that story that comes all the way from the 1960s and 70s um, of the first marimberos uh, and then the best cancer to flood the United States, to flood Europe, um, you know those those very psycho psychoactive and psychedelic mm -hmm. strains that were grown in the foothills of, <clears throat> of the Sierra Nevada Mountains and La Guajira, and all these uh, perfect territories that have the perfect microclimate. Uh, so so yeah, my story pretty much is <clears throat> is the union of a bunch of cultures and of a bunch of stories that end up. Uh, sparking this this interest in me, right? And and since I came from Miami, you know, uh, I thought that everything was already invented and everything was already done. Especially thinking that yeah, whoever did it in the 70s and 80s were the ones that were lucky, and they were the ones that did it the first, and they right. were the ones that did it when it was the times to do it, right? But then life, you know, threw me back in the same exact position. You know, right now I'm in the mountains of Colombia and I'm growing for. A legal company, a biopharma company called Avicana, um, Canadian, Colombian, uh, and it's amazing because I'm back in the same mountains that they produce tons of cannabis uh, for the market, for the traditional market, how we call it, because you know I don't like to use the word black market, so I call it the traditional market. <laughs> but 
but yeah, like like those that that urge to come back, just like how people, you know, grow the best grapes for for wine, you know, in Sonoma County or or in Chile or in Argentina. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the same reason, you know, why people that grow in, in in the right microclimates worldwide have to take advantage of that, right? So, for example, like the Emerald Triangle in California, all those uh, areas in California, like Palm Springs, where it's extremely dry and hot, you know, um, every place in the United States that has those those microclimates really uh, has, you know, the the best organic sun-grown cannabis in that region, right? And, mm-hmm. and Colombia was the producer and the exporter of the best sun-grown organic cannabis in the world, you know, because only these regions were able to put out that much tons, you know, to, to get to everybody. So, but yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting how, how life puts you back in a position where you're able to, to live, you know, the, these, these similar situations and, and be able to, to, to see the the pros of, of of growing in these lands, right? So so one of the biggest things um, when I came here to Colombia, I always like I said, um, my background was a little bit on on being a, a sommelier, you know, like like right. being in my crew to smoke as much cannabis all over the world, you know, and and be around the industry from a very very young age and have you know like my mentors. Which right now, uh, for example, Gato from Marimberos, Jose from Marimberos, Sergio, yeah, and, uh, one and of the biggest oak Ga- growers Gato, in Colombia. Is that someone? Just so everyone yeah. watching, Gato, is that the guy we would have seen in the Strain Hunters touring around with the greenhouse seeds and and Arion? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Gato, you. I met Gato in two thousand and eleven when I moved here from Colombia. Uh huh. And the reason I met him obviously was because I was looking for good cannabis. And that time when I reached Colombia, uh, which is one of the reasons I started growing, is because I found the need to grow my own medicine. Right. So so in Miami, like in Miami, I was just surrounded by good quality because my best friends and my best friends' older brothers and and close relatives would always be around the best cannabis in Florida, uh-huh. um, you know, we, we would get, you know, cannabis shipped from California back in 06, 07. Um, so we, we knew, you know, good strains. We knew good cannabis. We knew different types of, of uh, growing methods, we grew in houses. We knew people who grew outdoors. We knew people who had gorilla grows. Uh, we knew everything from cannabis, right? It was like my passion at the time. Right. So coming here, um, not finding that quality, made me you know wake up and be like holy shit you know here definitely you're not going to find any friends that that are going to at least be in the position to have enough can- cannabis or good cannabis to feed you know you and and then your friends so you might as well start growing right so so that's pretty much when i meet gato you know um uh, and i met gato here in santa marta because santa marta is my dad's hometown so i always come here and and life doesn't you know life is crazy it just puts you in the, in the perfect situations you know if you if you dream me, you know, dude, it's beautiful. So me and Gato, you know, uh, we we straight up we met thanks to my cousin Jose, which is right now one of the founding fathers of Black Tuna, uh, and he also comes out in Strain Hunters. Um, he he's very OG also, um, <clears throat> and he's he's the one that pretty much has the formula that he taught me the formula for the feminization process because it, it's a European formula, right? Mm-hmm. Because the whole Marimberos project was was founded in Barcelona, and they did the first work with DNA Genetics, and they worked with the plan for a little bit, which is like their main distributor in Barcelona, <clears throat> and they did a, a bunch of you know really cool stuff. They were gonna open up the the Marimberos lounge, you know, but due to politics and due to like you know they were five kilometers away from certain schools, yep. they weren't able to open up. But the whole the whole brand and everything is was you know like the first attempt of these of these people who got together. I wasn't in the picture at that time, um, but then I came in the picture when they came back to Colombia. Right? Yeah. So Jose came back to Colombia and we started doing like our whole our whole pretty much like me coming into the equation. Now, I think me coming into the equation really, you know, it, it really just just uh, senses because I ended up being a pheno hunter. Uh, for for this big you know you know with the, this big crew you know they yeah. were like my older brothers in the community and they were very well they are very well connected you know today 
Mm-hmm. We have connections with everybody in the industry. That's why Black Tuna is also able to source, um, you know, those those good clones, those good seeds. Yep. Because uh, we're constantly, you know, in the radar, and we're constantly uh, you know, making friends in the industry that come from other friends that come from other friends. You know, so it's it's always this big community that that you know when somebody sees that you're doing things right. And that you bring something to the table that's respectable. Yep. Um, you know, everybody wants to wants to be a part of it, and you want to be a part of, of their work too, right? Yep. So, so definitely, yeah. That that was a, a big thing in, in Black Tuna is definitely um, coming into to the industry with these with these OG, you know, players. Uh huh. Is definitely one of the one of the ingredients that allows us to be to be very selective and to be unique in our in our certain way you know i think every bank uh every breeder is unique in their certain way i think every breeder has you know signature strains that they bring to the table i don't think that there's a better breeder than another yep um i think it's very subjective you know i think uh cannabis is is a wide variety you you can't really compare whoever makes white chocolate to black chocolate yeah exactly Um, it's all personal flavors and tastes and 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 you know what's really exciting and i I just want to say Carlos, we have a ton of people on here tonight, and everyone is really excited. We even got some people saying, uh, are you looking to hire anyone? Do you need anyone to uh, to help you with that work? Because it sounds really fun. We've got a bunch of people, bro, willing to come out and help you. Because, um, number one, it's absolutely beautiful. And as you were talking about Santa Marta and some of these groves and everything out there, I was pulling up pictures here on the screen. For those of you guys watching, number one, I'm the biggest fan of Colombia. To me, it's the best country to live in and explore. It's just absolutely beautiful and Santa Marta which very soon here in April 420 Homegrown TV is going out and we're visiting you Carlos we're going to check everything out we're going to do something amazing out there in Santa Marta (laughs) but I just wanted to take a second and say how beautiful it really is out there and how fortunate you are to have you know this your operation set out from Santa Marta how many of you guys on this live right now had seen the episode we did where I included the KO and that was the the Kimbo Nicole um that we put out on Homegrow TV. As you can see, I do. you can kind of see it in the background here of some of these things that I have. How many of you guys seen that episode, guys, of the Black Tuna when I ran the KO? And just a heads up, there's going to be a giveaway going on later tonight, guys. So make sure you stick around to the end. <laughs> we got some. I got some amazing stuff that I'm going to be popping soon. So I want to take a second and talk about Black Tuna. And I want to talk about the history, Carlos. I want you to tell us. You know, the first call I did with you, man, it was so interesting. We hung out for like an hour and a half, and I was just so amazed after the call, the history, the, the stories that you told me with Black Tuna. And then we'll get to where you guys are going in the future with some of these things that you're working on, these new crosses. But let's start in the back. What's the history as far as like the name, you know, Black Tuna? I found it like to be one of the coolest, <coughs> catchiest names. Take me back to there, to the beginnings. Of course, yeah. Black Tuna is... It- it's the beginning of, of the cannabis exportation culture in, in Colombia. Uh, the Black Tuna crew or the Black Tuna gang, as they were called, was, you know, a group of people, um, people from Santa Marta, people from America, uh, who, who made the first routes, you know, from Santa Marta uh, to the United States. You know, some of the routes through boat, some of the routes through plane. Um, but they were the real OG producers and exporters of cannabis uh, in America, pretty much. Um, and they, why are they unique? Why did we want to bring them back? Why not bring back any other crew or any other gang? Because first, they were the originals. They were the first ones to do it. The, they were the ones to do it before the drug cartels got involved. Wow. They were the ones bef- to do it before... The coca leaf was made into cocaine, synthesized in labs and, and exported. And, and before even, you know, guns and and, and all, all these, you know, negative things got involved, you know, because Santa Marta it used to be run by the United Fruit Company. Hmm. And the United Fruit Company, which right now is Chiquita Banana, and, you know, right now it produces for Dole, you know, yeah. which does all the exportations of the bananas and fruits to all pretty much, you know, the world were the ones that brought their agronomers and were the ones that brought the infrastructure, you know, for, for cannabis also to grow perfectly and to, for them to have all the infrastructure and the ability to do so, right? So, so cannabis was grown just like coffee was grown. It was grown just like any other fruit of exportation in that time, right? Seen as a negative 
influence. It was seen like any other substance uh, that had to be well respected and, and was exported at that time. It, you know, right. it, it meant a lot of farmers uh, got to put food on their plates. Mm -hmm. So, so that that is the black tuna origins. The black tuna origins are uh, it, it's a group of guys who got together and and saw the effects of cannabis and in, in the culture and the American culture and they weren't scared to go against the politics of that time. They weren't scared to go against the president. They weren't scared to go against the DEA. They weren't scared to go against this because they had no blood on their hands. Right. You know, um, so we wanted to relive that. We wanted to revive that. We wanted to put a different color on that uh, story that maybe had, you know, a, a negative, uh, no connotation to it so so that was pretty much the origins of black tuna also that you know we happen to be cousins of the original black tuna because santa marta is a very small town so everybody here's family uh and we're the ones you know it's not like somebody who got up and says oh i'm gonna use this because this has story like you know how they're doing right now with with everybody uh you know everybody who uses you know pablo's name or whatever's name or this is name or that's name you know they're, they're really doing it because they want the free, you know, the free press or they want, you know, the, the, the looks or the likes. But for us, it's like we've been into cannabis 15 years of our lives and some of the members even more. For example, like our, our eldest member, Sergio, he's been in the in the game for 30 plus years. Um, these these guys, you know, we weren't even thinking about Black Tuna when we started this. So, so we, we have, you know, I think the experience and the right to actually take this name and and front it yeah. you know and be the face of this it's it's a brand and it's a name that has a lot of weight in the industry it has a lot of respect that like you said it has a lot of story mm -hmm. and and we're reliving it now i think we're we're getting these mountains like i said to be able to fill up a mountain right now with sixty thousand legal cannabis plants you know thc um you, you know that that's a dream like very few people get to grow cannabis and that you know, and and that um, like size, right? Like yeah. the structure being so big, and could do it without you know having to worry that the cops are going to kick down the door or that no the helicopters doubt. are coming. You know, so so we're taking back the name. Like before, our 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 you know ancestors or whatever you know fifty ancestors sound so old. I mean, like our our mm -hmm. OGs, they had to you know they had to be scared in the mountains. But today we're not, so we're taking that name back. So pretty Hell much yes. the origins of black the, or, the origins of black tuna is is that is taking a name that started off, you know, with with the whole exportation deal here, and and it was the best cannabis. It was like champagne of cannabis. Right. That's why we also want to bring it back. Like we're talking, we're seeing right now, we're studying the ways that we can actually get it uh, origin denomination, right? Like champagne, uh, like these things, uh, because here is where cannabis grows you know without you having to do anything <laughs> it just grows very very well yes indeed <laughs> my god dude that's it's so the first time i heard that story and and our first call the first thing that went through my mind and i want everyone's opinion on this live right now the first thing that went through my mind was this needs to be documented in a professional way and it needs to be the first of a docu-series of showing the history of cannabis in Colombia. It has played such a major role in strains around the world, right? And as back in the days as well as, as providing the world with its cannabis as well. Like there's so much history here. How many of you guys would like to see a docu-series? You know, we're talking 20-minute, well-done episodes, Netflix quality. And the first place I want to do it is going out and covering black tuna their history and the cultivations that you guys are doing in a second i want to move to the future and what you guys are doing with genetics like talk about a genetic nerd that's that's carlos right here guys like talking with him about genetics is so fun because he's so informed he knows so much history guys we're talking about 15 years in the industry and he didn't just get into any specific niche he got into genetics and breeding by the way people said yes they would love to watch that um, they would that would be an amazing okay. series. I don't know about you Carlos, but I think we got to plan it, bro I think we really got to do it because just that little segment and we only took a few minutes to hear the history It's obviously much larger than that We got to do something about that So for sure what for sure. you sent me a video yesterday I didn't get a chance to show it on the live, but I really want to show it right now So before we show it this video just to give some context that we're gonna show the people 
I was like, bro, when can we do the live, Carlos? What do you think? And he's like, oh, man, I'm busy right now. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm harvesting a shit ton of plants. I'm like, send me a video, bro. I want to see. So this video I'm going to show you guys. Give us some context. How many days? How many like plants? What kind of operation was going on? What they're about to see? For sure. For sure. Yeah, we were actually hunting. Uh, we, we were doing a stability test on our fem line, and we were doing a stability test on our on our, our new native line, right? Uh -huh. So we had uh, our, our strains are, are going to come out uh, registered also in Colombia. Yep. Um, which is very big yeah. news, and, and I, I'm going to um, take this space to say it. We're, we're going to come out with the whole feminized line and the whole native line. They're going to be registered cultivars uh, here in, in Colombia. So yes. we're going to be able to to commercialize, you know, with uh, with ID, and we're going to be able to sell at stores, and, we're gonna, you know, it's going to be very, very interesting um, because it's also very nice. You know, the strains are actually made for Colombia, you know, in South America and regions mm -hmm. that... That, that are that have like the microclimates that we have right so so yeah that that was part of of that uh experiment for analyzing those lots so we had pretty much uh it was a total of a thousand plants wow. um and yeah and so pretty much yeah like lots of a hundred of each genetic and uh and then some you know wow so so yeah it was it was very interesting right there when when you called me um, to get that video, we were like four four rows away from finishing, so about you know there was like two hundred plants left. <laughs> um, but yeah, right there, the one we were harvesting when when I took the video was Symphandel, which is you know she's a beauty. The the, the most important strains that we have, um, you know, the whole native line is just beautiful for outdoors because yes. the donor is is a, a rose Colombian, which is a a, a, um, a pink phenotype of. A punto rojo, uh -huh. um, and is um, and it's she's crossed with a masar sharif uh, from Sensi seeds, and but that masar sharif actually it was from a seed seeds that um, my associate bought like in 1996, you know. Wow. So it was OG OG, you know, masar sharif. Uh, uh, so it was very indica, beautiful the masar and and the and the pink Colombian was just you know very very sativa dominant. Uh, so she made a very true F1 hybrid, you know, when, when I was looking for something for, cause you know, in the first fem line, we use Nicole, mm -hmm. uh, Nicole, she's, she's beautiful, you know, because she's actually stabilized in, in Valle del Cauca in Colombia. So anybody who's going to grow Nicole, you know, she's been growing here for like about 10 plus years. And, and the thing about cannabis is the more her cycles, like the more, more you take her cycles and cycles and cycles and you clone her and you keep the mother plant and you keep giving her mm -hmm. cycles in different regions. Uh, plant genetic memory is very, very, very strong. Like it's very fast. So what the plant genetic memory does is they learn really quickly um, about their environment. They learn really quickly about their temperatures. They learn really quickly about you know how much breeze there is, uh, mm. how much rain there is, and they pass that on. You know to to their to their genetic wow. progeny. I had no idea. When pass it, yeah, when they pass it on to the genetic progeny, um, pretty much that's what makes cannabis stronger and stronger as the cycle goes. Um, so you have strains, and that's what pretty much we we dedicate ourselves to here. And and pretty much I was telling you that with the Cherry West strain. The reason why we haven't dropped Cherry West yet, uh, we just dropped her with a couple of crosses with uh, Black Jaguar and uh, with Raspao, the one you have there, mm -hmm. uh, is because she was getting um, she was getting domesticated. Yeah, you know, she she was adapting to the she was adapting to the to to the place where where we're growing her right. And the first cycle, the first cycle, I grew her indoors. That's what I always do. I always take my plants indoor. Uh, you know, when I'm when I'm pheno hunting, I always like to, to throw an indoor run because mm -hmm. I can control all the, the characteristics. I can control what they drink, how they drink it, the temperatures, the CO2 levels. I really kickstart them to see their potential. And then after they check all my marks, you know, in, in the indoors, I take them outdoors. Yeah. And then I run a cycle with them outdoors. And Cherry West was one of those that she was very well indoors and outdoors she hated her life. Right. Like outdoors she was a, a very sick plant. You know, she was. She never got uh, to a to a military green. She was always like yellowish. Uh -huh. 
no matter how much EC you gave her, no matter how much nitrogen you gave her, no matter how much Calmac you gave her, you know, she was just yellow and hating right. her life. And now we're a year, we're a year in with her, and now she's loving life. Wow. And right so why was that specifically? Like when she was not hitting, you know, like you were saying, like that nice deep green, was that partially, you think, like nutrients? Or was that specifically what you're saying about conditions and like not being used to being outdoors? Yeah, it's it's definitely conditions. Okay. Um, definitely because we're, we're you know, the, the cannabis industry for some reason thinks, you know, that we could skip the reality of, of – uh, uh, of the plant sciences and the vegetable sciences world, you know, like what I mean by that is, okay, um, we're going to try to grow rice in a dry area. No, man, rice grows in wet places, mm -hmm. period. And if you don't flood your land, you're not going to grow rice. Uh, let's try to grow roses in the desert. No, brother, you can't grow roses in the desert. Uh, let's try to take to bring a a species of mango from the island and somewhere else, and let's try to grow it in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Not going to grow. Right. You no, know, because because it's not from there, you know, and it hasn't been adapted, it hasn't been domestic, it hasn't been bred, it hasn't been genetically worked. So so that's why it's the same thing with cannabis, right? So, Got you. So people forget that they have to work the parental lines, you know, they have to be worked the same way you want your your seeds to work you know like you can't have a uh, parents in an indoor right that never had an outdoor experience that have never been worked in any other um you, you know climates or conditions and then expect for for their progeny to be completely resistant you know be, because unless they have some genetic cultivars that come from an outdoor strong line you know like everything comes from mexican colombian you know thai everything comes from from a from a, a land race origin right? got you, you know, colombia doesn't have any land race because you know the america's never had a, any original cannabis you know cannabis comes from uh, central asia and it comes from all that area of, of of the european eastern europe right got you so pretty much like when cannabis got to the new world you know, with with the different types of cultures that it got here, with with the Spaniards when they brought, because you know the whole naval, the whole naval scene, eighty percent of the naval scene was built thanks to hemp fiber. Right. It was built thanks to hemp, with thanks to you know even the candles were lit with 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 the special resins that were produced, <laughs> you know, by by hemp. Yeah. Hemp. So you know the the mariners, the the captains, everybody had clothes made with hemp. The you know the 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 sails from the ships and everything was made with Ropes, hemp. Everything. So so cannabis always like you know the story of cannabis is the story of human beings, right? Like wherever they went, they brought cannabis with them. Uh, so so when the cannabis started getting here to the new era, right? To to the new world, to the Americas. That's when the 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 ones that were, for example, here in Colombia, the ones that ended up being you know Punto Rojo and Mango Viche and Limon Verde and all these. Uh, were the ones that were grown originally in the tropical areas of the old world, right? Of the of the European continent of, of this. So, for example, anything that grew next to the equatorial line, uh -huh. right? So maybe that's why even some African strains over here, right? That's why Durban poison does very well over here because Durban poison from the port of Durban in Africa is is very sativa dominant, uh -huh. so it's going to be very good over here. That's why Thai strains do very good over here. Um, so that's why Colombia gets so what makes the difference between these Colombian strains and the original strains from what they come is the ground where they're where they're um, where they're cultivated. Right. Yeah. So these strains that for over many years start growing in areas that also have mango trees and also have lemon trees and have the grounds that give these fruits the same characteristics, the mm -hmm. terpenoids and the flavonoids. Right. That's how cannabis starts earning these different uh, terpenoids and flavonoids and characteristics, right? Wow. It's because it's it's grown in these areas that are also, uh, you know, the ground is also built to give these characteristics to the fruits and to the fresh flowers and all these things, right? So that's why, Af like, those Afghan genetics are very hashy, very incensey, you know, because they're in very remote areas where the terrain is very rough, where it's very rocky, where it's very sandy, Wow. Right where there's yeah. the, the water is is underneath. There's very little water on top, but everything is 
with the underneath water wells that feed the the soil with minerals yep. and nutrients that end up getting these plants their characteristics you know even of taste wow so so what makes colombian strains so so tasty is is colombia has the the microclimates and the soils right to give these plants during many years of inbreeding because remember we never controlled cannabis until until a little bit ago you know, you know but for the mm-hmm. whole cannabis history they've been you know the the strains would get to those areas and then they would never take away the males so after every harvest you know the males would pollinate the females and the seeds would drop and it was always you know uh what we would call inbred lines right with 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 them being in 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 in, in their own progeny right so it's it's pretty much what the breeders say is the best way is, is like the open pollination when you really want to you know uh, conserve genetic markers the best way to do it is to do open pollinations you know of all your males and all your females together in one whole orgy uh-huh. and then you get those seeds and and you know those seeds are going to give you all those genetic components of the original strains that were there right dude so so that's what pretty much happened naturally here so the the uh, the amazing part about that is that colombia has the and going back to what i was talking about how we want to uh, you know, ignore the plant science world, and it's it's because Colombia right now says, okay, you have to you, you have to characterize the genetics here in order to sell the genetics, right? And mm-hmm. we're like, oh no, let's not do that because you know that's gonna really screw us up, and it takes time and money. And yes, it takes time and money, but it's the only way you can actually give people strains that will grow correctly where they are, right? Because the reality is that not everybody has an indoor, right? If we all had indoors and if we all cultivated interiors and we were all able to mm-hmm. control every single aspect about about uh, cultivation, um, then okay, then our parental lines and, and the seeds could come from anywhere in the world because it doesn't matter right. because it's relative because anywhere in the world that we're controlling, you know, we're still keeping it the exact same humidity, exact same hours of light, exact same you know temperature so it doesn't matter but if we're going to give you know growers and outdoor growers and people who are going to have you know a couple plants uh in their backyard with 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 a shade house or you know if we're going to give the the big majority of growers a chance to to get good cannabis you know then we have to we have to work the parental lines we have to domesticate the the parental lines so they can have good uh good outcomes it's the only way right. So that's why Black Tuna used, you know, Nicole in the first run is because, you know, somebody already did the work for us. You know, somebody's been growing Nicole here in the mountain for over 20 years, you know, I mean, like 10 plus years, 15 years. So it's it's a plant that's been all over Colombia. You know, it's a plant that's been all over Colombia and has been uh, pretty much domesticated here. And that's why the crosses with Nicole, like me bringing in Sour Diesel BX2 from Karma Genetics, uh, me bringing in, you know, the sherbs from Always Be Flowering. We're looking right here at a cross uh, on uh, Black uh, Tuna. We got Mermelada, which is grape skittles crossed with Nicole. Yeah. That the end. Yeah, looks, from Apothecary. Yeah, looks amazing. Yeah, so so there that grape skittles really, really, uh, you know, we have very few plants that go purple in the in the fem line because there was also a thing, you know, I had a little itch in my head. Because everybody was having, you know, like purple buds and everybody was having rainbow buds, yeah. but but nothing smelled, man. Right. Like everything was very like odor. It's like what I said. It was like you know, it was like, hard and, and to was... get like a good bag appeal and good terps for this like I mean for this little era when I was like, man, it's so beautiful, it's the fucking coolest bag appeal I've ever seen. And I'm like, oh man, like it really didn't live up to to what I thought. Now we're getting to the point where sorry, and I'll let you continue, but I I've definitely had that experience before. Let me know you guys in the show how many have had that. Beautiful buds with no flavors, no terps, man. Exactly, one hundred percent. So, so I wanted to make cannabis green again, you know, and that's a little campaign I had, cause you know the sour diesel I smoked in 06, it wasn't purple, you know, it was green. It was, it was, you know, it it was fluorescent green. It wasn't even normal green. Right. It was, you know, it was radiant green. It looked like fucking. <laughs> Or whatever kills Superman. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that that's what I wanted to to bring to the Colombian people and to the Colombian market because you know, and I don't want to say, uh, by you know my one of my 
my family members are leaving. All right, so, no so way, yeah, I don't want to, you know, throw throw anybody under the bus or throw because I think everybody in this industry here is is doing the best work in the world, and we're actually, you know, we're the most respected industry I think in South America, and we're the most united industry in South America. The other day they were telling me, "Wow, you guys have one cup a month." I'm like, "Yeah," and just right? wait, just got started. Yeah, dude. You know that, that doesn't yeah. happen anywhere else in the world. You know that. One yeah, cup. and let me know, based on Autoflowers, so, Grower Joe, so, if you're on the call. We were talking about this the other day in Canada. It's so hard to be able to go. I mean, even to one or two a year, and even if there is one or two a year to go to, the bar to even get in to be able to compete, it's just like, it's it's really not a thing, you know? And, and, and in the States, I know there's more and more popping up, and even again, hi again, if you guys are on, shout out to you guys. Um, you know, they're going to this one in Chicago, I think Kemp Fest or something like that, but it's not often that they get the chance to be able to go to an event, less compete or judge. Guys, by the way, Carlos, We've met at so many events. He has judged at so many events. Recently, actually, the last one we went to, you did not judge, and you actually took home a first place and a third place, right, at the same cup. Dude. Yeah, we're coming for more to this year. I gotta, I'm got i going to put my judge hat down. Yeah, yeah, I think so, dude, with these killer strains. And I want to talk about the future, and more so specifically, I want to talk about this uh, these land crosses and the, this new uh, native line sorry, that you guys are launching. Before we do, we have a bunch of people waiting for this harvest video that we promised them. We still didn't show it. People are loving it, by the way. Bro, we got some amazing feedback. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We're going to show you guys a quick little one-minute video that Carlos sent to me when we were talking yesterday when he was doing a crazy harvest. So check it out, guys. Hey, guys, what's up? We're here testing out some black tuna genetics in the outdoors. Uh, we're looking at Symphondel, which is pretty productive. It's a very stable plant. Packs hard, very resistant to outdoors. Um, you know, over here in the summertime, it's very, uh, it's nice to, to see how, how the strains do in, in exterior and see how they can produce and see how they do well on the ground instead of in pots. Um, so yeah, we're very happy with the system though. If you want to get a closer look, they had 30 days of veg um, and they're packing hard. This is eight week flowering and we're harvesting today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? We're here testing out some black tuna genetics in the outdoors. Uh, we're looking at Symphondel, which is pretty productive. It's a very stable plant, packs hard, very resistant to outdoors. Um, you know, over here in the summertime, it's very, uh, it's nice to, to see how, how the strains do in, in exterior and see how they can produce and see how they do well on the ground instead of in pots. Um, so yeah, we're very happy with this system though. If you want to get a closer look, they had 30 days of veg, um, and they're packing hard. This is eight week flowering, and we're harvesting today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? Did I just let that play gotcha. twice for you guys? I might have let that play twice, I'm not sure. And my headphones just died. One second guys, we're doing a little technical switch over here. Carlos, can you hear me? You can still hear me good, brother? Perfecto. Perfect. So one sec, your audio is now coming through the computer. So I'm just going to change this. While I change this quick, this audio, guys, we got some questions of people asking, does Carlos have an IG? He most certainly does, and I meant to show you before we went to that commercial break. So while I fix this, guys, take a look. Here's his Instagram. Please take a second right now and go follow him. He creates some fucking awesome content, guys. Again, just playing at a different level than Homegrow TV, truly doing some really big, big things. Um, one second, let me just go to Skype here and switch my audio over to my headset. Can we hear from you really quick there, Carlos? Perfect. Okay, I'm going to go into headset. And now we're set. We're connected. All right, we're back, guys. Cool. So, yeah, there's this Instagram, guys. Definitely go check that out. Um, really great content. And, again, the Black Tune one we've already thrown down several times. As you can see right here, Black Tuna Seeds. Definitely recommend going to follow them. And especially if you're going to stick around to the end to, uh, to the giveaway, well, you're going to need to have that account open and ready. So let's, um, I want to talk about something amazing. And that's what you guys are doing here with La Linea Nativa, this native line, bro. You guys are doing, when I did this video, and again, guys, if you haven't watched it, go check it out. We actually grew a Black Tuna Seeds. We have a KO. And it was actually the first and only video where I actually had other strains in there. We had a black hole from Robin Hood, and I think we had a banana, 
um, a Nana Sherbert, or no, it was something else. You got to watch the video. Anyway, three different seed banks, and the most common feedback I got was people asking about what's going on in Colombia. I want to try some Colombian beads. Where can I hit them up? Um, so let's talk about this, bro. How did you end up, you know, what was the inspiration behind the Native Line? Yeah, so, so yeah, the Native Line comes as as a claim, you know, by our people, pretty much, uh, the Colombian culture, because our first line, you know, it had a lot of uh, exotics as the receptors, uh, and the Nicole pretty much is, is Colombian, but she's really not Colombian, because the Nicole is a blue satellite times Shishkaberry times MK Ultra. so blue satellite from Breeder Steve, uh, the Shishkaberry is from Old World Genetics, uh, DJ Short, and the MK Ultra is from Adam Dunn, who found the TH seeds. So pretty much that that's what conforms Nicole. And then she gets crossed with kosher to Kush, and that's where the Nicole Kush comes from, the kosher from DNA. So that was, she's very complex. Uh, so it was a necessity because people are like, okay, that's cool, but, you know, where's the Colombian strains? Where's the mango iche? Where's the punto rojo? Where's yes. everything? So yes. we're like, okay, what do we have that could really be um, this, but, but, but come to this in a way that it's way more mature. So what I did was in the selection of receptors, uh, I selected plants and phenols that I have worked before. So for example, the Cherry West. Why is the Cherry West so special? Um, is because her ancestors actually come from Colombia. Gotcha. So pretty much uh, Gene from from uh, Free Born Selections, Mean Gene from Mendocino, uh, he was back cross from him. And he told me the story because I went up to him at the Buddha Emerald Cup and I told him, hey, I'm from Colombia. What do you recommend for over there? You know, and he pulled that out and he gave it to me. Uh, and he told me that that strain is really special because my family has been breeding that for a while. And it comes from a Colombian strain that my mom or one of my family members, I forgot who said, named Candelabria. So Candelabria actually comes from you know, the, na the name of a candelabro, you know, which a candelabro is, um, it it's the the things that they used to put the candles in the very fancy oh, yeah. uh, dinners, you know? Yeah. So, so it's it's very unique because she has, you know, a, a, a main center cola, right? And then she has colas around that center cola. You know, and the center cola is just a little bit above the other ones. So it's actually like a very nice crown and it actually does the shape of a candelabra. And and I actually, by chances of life, you know, I got a pheno. Like I told you, that was indica dominant. Uh -huh. But the terps on her, the terps on her are lemon, right? Lemon zest. Like, yeah, like a lemon zest for sure. Um, so that's limonene pretty much and piney. Got you. Uh, and a little bit of myrcene, right? The myrcene, so myrcene is found in mangoes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the main terpene that gives the mango its taste. So so it's a very lemon with a little undertones of some mango, but mostly lemon. Got you. Now, why did I choose the lemon terps? Is because it wasn't going to kill the original lemon in the limon verde and in the punto rojo and in the mango biche. Because the mango iche has that myrcene and that limonene and that piney, right? Also does limon verde and also does punto rojo, right? So so it was a plant that was going to bring a 130-day sativa uh -huh. because that's what people don't understand. Like people always ask for Colombian strains or for sativas, yeah. but nobody really has the patience or the space <laughs> yes. to grow a 130-day you know, plant, and, and that's how they are, you know, it's, I have right now, like, I cut that day, like, yesterday, I, I finished cutting, mm -hmm. and, and we had to leave the whole native line, almost all of it, <laughs> you know, Mesti uh, especially the three, the three that are F2 hybrids, yep. so the F2 hybrids, pretty much, we took, you know, the, the three best females in the lot, and we, we crossed them with, with that male, number 88, so that male is black completely. Like she's not even green. The male is not green at all. He's black uh, from birth, you know. So his vegetative is he's he's already turning black purple hues, and in flowering he builds up, you know, his pollen sacs. He's completely black, yep. and he has like a nice, uh, like a, a, a mango carpaccio with uh, olive oil terps. Beautiful, you know, it's dude. Very, 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 very unique. 
and it's very Colombian. Yeah. You know, because if you go to the original strains, they're not sweet. You know, they're not candy at mm-hmm. all, and and they're not flower floral. Yeah. They're actually very unique in a in like. You know, we ha- I had to hunt through phenos that were in the in the carrot department. You know, carrots and the vegetable department. Uh, so it's you have to hunt through a lot of Colombian strains, you know, to get those original terps. So pretty much when we when we hunted for these, that's what we did. We hunted for the original lemons, original mangoes, original terps. You know that are you know fathers and grandfathers smoked here in in that time, and that's why we were able to get. You know those those original terps that make up the 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 fame in Colombian plants, right? And yep. bring those flowering days down. But for example, like if a if a grower knows how to read genetics and they read, it, for example, mestizo mulato, and they read sambo, you see it says Colombiana Colombian rose times Massar Sharif mm-hmm. times Colombian rose times times Massar Sharif. Yep. So it's an F two. And and the the recessive genes, you know, it'll throw you. Yeah, maybe it'll give you like one indica that looks like its great grandfather. Yep. Maybe like one one every twenty, one every thirty plants. You know, but the the thickness of it is very long flowering sativas that people are probably not even gonna understand. Right. Right. Because like I say, they have a different uh they have a different feeding schedule. They have a different way of treating them. You know, you can't be topping them you can't be scrogging them you can't be doing anything Mm -hmm. uh you can't be giving them veg time because you know you're just going to create monsters and and that's the way that that we've been able to to bring these genetics back but give them a little twist so the cherry west one is really my old-time favorite because the cherry west has the colombian original terps potentialized you know and it's a plant that finishes in in 55 60 days So, so, and I used two phenols. I kept two phenols, the Cherry West Day and the Cherry West Five. Yeah, got you. So, in the um, Raspau, that's that number five. Yeah. Got you. Raspau has five, and Ra- Raspau's five is, I call her, uh, that, that's the lemon phenol. Okay. Ooh. You know, so, so um, she's, she's very lemon. Yeah. Like, like, imagine just lemon, lemon, you just cut it in half, you open it, you stick it in your, mm. in your nose. Uh, so, you feel the acid in it. Um, and, and it's very unique, you know, yeah. and, and that's why uh, we were able to give it back to the Colombians. You know, we were able to feed it in a way that was was able to grow. So, Got you. You know, Black Jaguar and Raspau are plants that they were done at week eight. You know, but when you smell them, they have all the characteristics of old school sativas that, you know, take 10, 11 weeks, 12 weeks to, fl- to finish. Yep. So wow. so it was very 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 special. So you know, those I got your Instagram pulled up or, or Black Tuna Instagram pulled up. We're looking here at Jaguar Negro, right? We got Raspao, Salpicón, which for those of you that that do not speak Spanish or been to Colombia, you know, like a Raspao, it's so classic. A, a Raspao is like a, a snow cone, guys. You know, it's like in Canada, yeah. what you get is a snow cone. And so I just love the branding and, and the story. Again, everything around Black Tuna and the story is just, it's amazing for you guys to know, like you said, bring it back to the Colombian people, which the focus has been so outward based for so long. And for now, Black Tuna now to come back and give back. Um, and it's, I have a feeling there's a lot of people on this call who are wondering and scratching their head right now, how does someone get their hands on a pack of Black Tuna seeds if they wanted to, to purchase? Do they hit you guys on Instagram? Um, what's the best way to, yeah. to get a hold of? Do you guys uh, ship to US right now? Yeah, um, right now, um, right now we're we're opening up market in US. We're hoping to be at Insane Seed soon, um, which yes, yeah, it's gonna be pretty much our, our entering there. We're working on the first batch for them. Uh, unfortunately, we we only ship to Canada to South America okay. because the shipping is very friendly with those countries yep. you know with the u.s uh customs it's you know so I, we don't like for people to lose money or hopes um that's why if currently we're trying to do our best to, for us to take them over there uh, and we're, we're in the process and we're actually i have good news it's it's gonna be before the end of the got year. you so guys stay, um, stay tuned and definitely keep you know we, we, we're definitely gonna be doing more content together um so definitely stay tuned follow you know black tuna follow carlos vivas as well 
on his Instagram, which we've shown here. I'm going to show them one more time as well. And stay in touch, guys, because, again, like you said, hope this year, these are going to be available in the U.S. And tonight, no matter what, though, tonight, we're going to be doing a giveaway. We're going to be giving those instructions here soon. We're coming towards the end. I want to open this up to an open Q&A format. Um, so I'll let a few questions definitely roll in. Any questions that we have for Carlos at all? And while those questions roll in, um, we have someone on here, Southern Oregon Soil. My bro, Mike, dude, he has some huge grows going in California right now, all outdoor. And he's saying he needs to run some of this outside up there. And I think, bro, you would crush it, dude. I would love your opinion on some of these strains. So before, and as these questions roll in, Carlos, what strains are you going to recommend Home Grow TV? Because, bro, I got some news for you. I'm about to pop strains. Tomorrow is the day. So a few of them on my list actually got scratched off. It's a long story we'll talk about later. So I have a huge, a, a, a new garden basically is opened up and I want to make sure. Well, send me your direction. Send me your direction. I'll, I'll soup you okay, up. Okay, dude. Homegrown TV, guys. I'm announcing this to everyone. So you guys keep me accountable and stay in tune with it. We're going to do a whole tent dedicated to the native line. So we're going to do a few, you know, I'm going to do my own little pheno hunt. Uh, we're going to show you guys the content. I'm going to uh, tell the size of my tent to to Carlos and let him, you know, choose what he wants to see as a test grow at Homegrow TV, a five by five tent. We're gonna set it up with a beautiful light, bro, and I'm gonna give it my best. We're gonna document everything from seed to harvest so everyone here can see it. Um, but in the meantime, what strains would you recommend for someone like myself? I love fruity terps, bro. When you said lemon, I fell to my knees almost. I'm a big, you know, 100%. lover of super lemon haze, that type of stuff. So from the new native line, what do you recommend someone like myself? I wanted to first announce uh, Black Tuna proudly sponsors Homegrow TV in Dakota. Woo! Uh, he's going to sponsor the whole tent. It's going to be amazing. That just happened in uh, front of you guys, dude. I didn't know this. And Carlos, yeah, just just throw it. it just happened, <laughs> dude. What? Bro, I'm blushing right now. That's amazing, yeah. bro. Yeah, and it also comes with a black tuna gang shirt. You know, you yes. free stuff at airports. You know, some hot chicks coming <laughs> ask for photos. <laughs> yes. Maybe some guy. You know. <laughs> um, well, yeah, because you never know. But, um... Oh uh, yeah, so I recommend you to use for sure. You gotta pop the raspao you have. I'm okay. gonna double it up. I'm gonna send you another raspao, okay. and I'm gonna double you up on jaguar negro because Oosh. remember, since they're regular, because they're also a breeder's edition, we're gonna have to take the male. Okay. Away. So we're gonna always take like a thirty percent, uh, let's say thirty percent male. So yeah, definitely we will throw double. We'll, we're gonna throw in the beginning just because we're gonna have to kill off okay. at least you know a third of, of the of, of the room um but for sure we're gonna hit jaguar negro we're gonna hit marijuana okay that was that with the iguanas our, on it the, yeah okay. the iguanas i'm on pulling it, it up right now the merge into the ocean that one actually came up uh sergio my my associate he he made that name up mar uh, iguana it's funny now now yeah, and now we see it popping up everywhere. Dude, that's our, genius. Our homie, uh, our homie from uh, AC, uh, Authentic Seed Company, Todd McCormick, I saw him. He launched the other day, Marijuana, but with a W-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, it's coming up. It's yeah. coming up everywhere. <laughs> but, but yeah, Marijuana, it was, it was funny because, you know, where we grow, uh, we're five kilometers off one of the most amazing beaches, which is called the Bahia Concha. Uh, so it's Conch Bay in Santa Marta. You can look it up in uh, in Google. It's, it's beautiful. And we actually grow five kilometers uh, from that coast inward into the mountain. And in our, where we grow, there's a lot of mango trees and there's a lot of iguanas. You know, so, so you know, just having that, that cannabis produced next to the ocean wow. in a place filled with iguanas. You know, mad ocean, iguana, marijuana, and then have it be like the double sense of weed, you know, marijuana. Uh, it was just hilarious. So um, Love that. we threw her in there. And she also has, it has also a, a very, because my strains, you know, everybody also, they throw a lot of things that taste, but I also like to look at the look aspect. So for example, my Samarian sunset, Oof, uh, yes. the, 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 the plant actually finishes like like a sunset, right? With a with I gotta pull up right now orange, for everyone to, to take a look. You know, and, and yeah, so so I like to play with actual visuals of, of the strain as well, right? So for example, marijuana, since iguanas are, are green, the Sinfandel line 
is completely green, you know, because you sour diesel, which is completely green, and the coal, which is completely green. Uh, and, you know, the OG uh, Colombiana Rosada, times Masar Sharif, is also, you know, she has a, a, a mostly green progeny. Uh -huh. it's, it's one out of every ten that throws out the pink, the pink pistols. So, so pretty much you're having green dominant buds, you know, that get structured. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a very green pack because it resembles what you're actually going to see throughout the whole experience, visual experience from when you get the pack to when you pop the seed to when you flower it. Yep. You know, it always goes so mermelada, you're always going to get purple tones. KO, you're always going to get dark tones. Um, so it's always like a visual experience also with the arts, you know, that, that resemble the the actual um genetics dude that's amazing bro <laughs> oh dude i'm so excited definitely after this after we finish the live i, I want to get into the giveaway um and then we'll definitely hit uh, a few of these questions actually let's hit a few of these oh, questions. Salpicón. Oh, one more time salpicón. salpicón i'm gonna get you yeah you're gonna grow marijuana salpicón <laughs> uh, jaguar negro and raspado you're gonna grow those that's right bro heck yes <laughs> salpicón right here which i don't even know how to describe that for our u.s and canadian viewers that's a full Colombian thing, yeah. salpicón, so, no? It's like a fruit <laughs> salad with... Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah it's a, so yeah, salpicón is a fruit salad. Yeah. Don't, yeah, exactly. It's a fruit salad. Here in Colombia, we get crazy because we throw, you know, we throw the cheeses yeah. and we throw the creams and we get, you know, we go away. Yeah. Here. But in reality, it's, it's supposed to be a fruit salad and nothing else. Got um, you, got you. But, but yeah, this one's pretty much mermelada, which is a grape Skittles times Nicole times Colombian pink times Masar Sharif. So... So she she's just you know marmalade cream she's beautiful you know it's amazing oh dude I'm excited uh, yeah. so before we her. talk about the details guys let's hit a few of these questions um, Carlos what strains does black tuna carry in the CBD THC if any yeah uh, so if you're asking the one to one ratios we're currently working on one to one ratio plants. Uh, we have a lot of CBD that we've been hunting from Oregon and from Colorado. Uh, you know, special, special saw, sour space candy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Harlequin, Harletsu, which is Harlequin, sometimes sour tsunami. Uh, we got uh, the ACDC crosses, Charlotte's Web crosses. Um, it, it's all currently in, in our bank, like, not not in seed form but it's in mother clonal form uh -huh. um and we're we're pretty much doing the the domestication process which is coming to an end they're already gonna complete you know four years of being grown and kept alive in mother form mm -hmm. um to, to start crossing them with our thc lines uh the thc lines like i said uh we, when we were talking a little bit before we started the live um i'm constantly doing pheno selections but I won't necessarily cross everything off the back as soon as I find it. I'll always uh, keep testing the mothers at least for a year, you know, so I can have like from two to three cycles with her. Gotcha. Um, and, and then I'll make the seeds. But yeah, for sure, the black tuna line. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna launch a sneak peek soon. Uh, but I'll say here also, um, uh, remedio seeds, la semilla de remedio. So remedios is remedy in Spanish. Uh, and Remedios here is a common name for for people uh, in Latin America, uh -huh. right? So we we embodied the the seed um, the, the seed line with a with a cannabis uh, Colombian woman, right? She's she's you know she she doesn't exist, but she's an imaginary cannabis woman who brings you know medicinal CBD seeds uh -huh. uh, to Colombians everywhere. You know, so, and we're going to drop the, the black tuna CBD line underneath, you know, La Semilla de Remedio. That's so sick. it's coming soon, and, and I'm very super happy to announce it here because it was, you know, we, we're working on the on the art and everything, and, and we're going to drop a, a couple, a couple, you know, we're going to start off with our main one, which it's called Sanak Esanax, and it's hilarious because, uh, you know, we're in the world where everybody, you know, is either trying to get off the, the, Prescriptions, you know, the, or, the, the prescription yeah. drugs, it, you know, it's fucking up our youth, it's fucking up everybody, you know, you see it in mainstream rap, you mm. see it everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, you see it in reggaeton, mm -hmm. you hear it everywhere, yeah. and people forget that there's so many cannabis varieties that you can have very similar effects to the effects that you get off these drugs, right, so, so I found, you know, 
especially in, in the one-to-one -one ratios, um, I found that, that there's extremely body highs in the one-to-one -one ratios and the CBD ratios yep. with low THC and, and high CBD. Mm -hmm. There's there's very, very complete body highs right. that kind of even take the edge and the anxiety off. Yep. They take it completely off. Now, all, like, it, it, it depends on the on the milligrams and on the potency and you know how often you medicate but but there's there's you know there's extremely powerful cannabis out there mm -hmm. you know so so when i found this strain which is uh you know with my colleagues obviously i do my whole especially the cbd work uh we do outdoors vast so when we found this one we we're very happy because she was she was like a a glue like a gorilla glue times tangy right so she's very okay. citric but she's yeah. very glueish yeah. so she's a citric glue and when you smoked her she literally took the edge completely off you know and, and when i say completely off it's completely off and and i used to have panic attacks right so i always look for for strains that that literally like anytime i i come into a feeling that i feel like the world's falling against me yeah like i have I have strains that are for that. That's amazing. Know? So I, I want to get them into people's hands because I really think that, you know, it's it's just like how when I moved to Colombia, uh, I, I remember I moved to Colombia and I used to go to parties. Uh, and when I went to parties, the girls here were like, oh, you're smoking weed? No way. Like, you're going to fall asleep. We're partying. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, nah, I keep that strain at the house. So when I get back from the party, I take that strain and I knock the hell out. Yeah. You know, but but no, right now I'm smoking some green crack or I'm smoking some XJ13. Or uh -huh. I'm smoking some super silver haze. Yes. Or I'm smoking, you know, some some, some mermelada or some cherry West, you know, because because that is, you know, to me is the equivalence of a coffee. To me, I, yeah. you know, the cherry West actually like, you know, the limonade, the mango, the mango lemonade, the fino I have, mm -hmm. I don't even smoke it. Like, and, and my friends are like, oh, why don't you smoke it? It's so tasty. I'm like, oh, I just can't smoke it because my heart starts racing. And right. that's what, like, yeah, I'm see. hyperactive as it is. Yeah. You know, when I look for something, I look for something to, contra to contrast that hyperactivity. But going back to the name of it, Sana Que Sana is a saying here uh, in Colombia and in a lot of Latin American countries which is like the whole saying is sana que sana culito de rana si no sana hoy sanará mañana oh, right? I, and I have to learn it, that one a, guys that's my my homework yeah, for it's our an next old, live it's an old Colombian say, ask your girl if she knows it yeah ask your girl if she knows it she definitely knows watch, it watch I'll start it and, uh, mi amor how does it go rana de rana sana que sana L rana termina el frase sana rana, rana que sana, sana culito que sana. de rana Culito de rana. Say, it, say it right now, sana que sana. Culito de rana. And what else? Uh, hay más? No, sana si que no sana. sana hoy, sanará si no, mañana. Si no sana hoy, si no sana hoy, sanará mañana. mañana. Yeah, she knows it, bro. You're right. <laughs> so that's my exactly. that's my homework. So it's very it's very into the Colombian culture, right? But we threw a twist on the end, and it's sana que sanax. Uh -huh. So it's Xanax is Xanax, right? So we finish it off with a Xanax twist. Yep. And it's because it takes complete anxiety away. It takes right. the edge off. It takes the depression. It goes I all that, bro. Away. We got another question so, here. Um, um, one was on autoflowers. You guys do not do autoflowers, right? Oh, autoflowers? I'm working right now okay. on the line, actually. Because, um, yeah, I'm working right now. I have the fast progeny, which which is pretty much the first time you cross into a uh, ruderalis. Yeah. The first time you cross into a ruderalis, you get something that's called like a fast version. So it's not completely auto, okay. but fast. it's fast. Got you. you know, so it'll, it'll always bring you like, that's why you hear it. I think, you know, many banks use it. Like, yeah, yeah. I've, like I got a critical fast, fast going blah, right blah, now, blah. actually. Got Dosido -do exactly. sitting beside me. But another question we have here, uh, this is from Christian. Carlos Parcero, what variety of black tuna do you recommend for Tunja? Is Tunja, is that someone you know or is that a location? Yeah, or, tu, that's a location tu, in... tu, yeah, Tunja, yeah, Tunja is in Cundinamarca. Ah, okay. It's in the, it's in like, you know, it's close to Bogota. It's actually by car. It's two hours and a half away Got by you. car. Okay. Um, I used to have a girlfriend that lived in Duitama. So she was actually an hour and a half further down Tuna. It's extremely cold. Got you. Really high altitude. Um, and 
Yeah, very high altitude, extremely cold. But it, it's a very dry cold unless it's raining. Okay. You know, if it's raining, then it's, it's very humid. Sounds great for indoor. But yeah, it's very tricky. Yeah, yeah, 100% in Tunja, we like the indoor must rule. But there's strains definitely in the Nativa line that you should give a try. Okay. Especially like if he's not afraid to throw hardcore sativas, and he for sure should try, you know, mulato, mestizo, and sambo if he's going to grow outdoors. And if he's going to grow, you know, indoors, and definitely anything from the back Got is you. good. Um, but, but, yeah, I would recommend even like limonada de mango, which is our, our, you know, here in Santa Marta, we only have one time of the year we have, a, a, you know, a rainy season. So we use limonada de mango and sinfandel when it's rainy season because they, they've been proven – you know, in large quantities of, you know, because we do most grows with seeds. Uh -huh. you know, we do very few clonal grows um, that they've proven to resist. You know, the, the mold count at the end is none. Like, it's 2 5%. You know, when when you compare it to, like, 10 15% of any other strain, even 20%, um, then it, it's, it's completely, you know, viable. Uh, right now, there's a girl that just grew a limonada de mango in Boyacá. Got you. Um, so definitely, and, and she harvested it perfectly. Um, she actually did a great job with it. Dude, that sounds amazing. We're going to take one last question, guys, and then we're going to give you the details for how we're going to be doing this giveaway. So this last question here is from Gumbo, and, and sorry, Gumbo, poor Gumbo, just commented every question pick book but mine. So I scrolled up, and I found your comment. Guys, I'm listening. I'm, I'm watching and I'm listening, all right? And thank you for tuning in, guys. It means a lot for you guys to be here. So Gumbo's question is, What's the cure process for you? When um, when you cure for your, for your cups, how long and how often are you burping? So again, you can answer this as brief or as detailed as you want. Carlos, totally up to you. Again, guys, for those of you who didn't know, at the last cup I went to, Homegrow TV did not win a single cup. But who did take home two cups was Carlos with the black tuna seeds, right? Um, first place and third place. So um, what what is a general outline of your curing process, bro? Well, pretty much um, my curing process here in Santa Marta, we have it hard, right? Because in Santa Marta, like, um, like Santa Marta is very, very, how do you call it? Hot and dry. Yep. Right? So hot and dry pretty much is, it sucks because if I were to leave a nug here at room temperature for a day, I already come back and it gets yellowy. And uh, pretty much all the trichomes have turned ambar, and if they're ambar, they shall go and transform. You know, some maybe even transform to CBN, uh, or most of your THC will probably transform to THC. Uh, whatever you know, chemical process will go on there. Yep. But the worst part about that is the terpene profile. You know, so your yeah. your very your your yeah. most tasty terps are gonna go out uh, at the lowest temperatures, and then. Your more denser, you know, shittier terps are going to, uh, you know, uh, um, go at higher temperatures, right? Um, so pretty much here what I do is I'll, I'll harvest and I'll, I'll pretty much fill the whole room up. And I'll go and the room will be pretty much, uh, I'll start at 16 Celsius the first day. And then at the third day, I'll drop to 18, right? And my humidity, it will be at 45. Okay. Um, and 45 will be the first day, and then towards the end, I'll bump it up to 50 humidity, right? Then after I bring it down from the drying room, uh, I dry about 14 days, uh, 14 to 16 days, depending on, on my density in the drying room. Um, and I use zero fans, right? So a lot of people here use fans. Fans is the first thing that make, you know, cannabis terpenes go to hell. Got you. So you want zero fans. You just want a very cold environment. Not even one in the corner, up. not directly pointed at it. Just like, no. no. Okay, I'm going to go turn mine off, guys. This live's zero. over. I'll see you guys later. No, I'm just, <laughs> I, I do have one pointed at the corner, <laughs> at the bottom, just to like zero, lightly zero circulate. Fans. All right, zero. It's going off. Zero fans. Uh, I have a, a intake and outtake of, of, you know, the room. So, uh, I'll have my uh, my filter, my carbon filter. It'll be having on in intervals and for a little bit, just enough so it can um, so it can renew 
the Got oxygen you. in the room, right? Because yeah. you don't also want a room that has zero circulation, but that circulation, you don't want it to be uh, directly pointing or hitting off the wall and then going back onto your plant, okay. right? Because that's definitely going to also kill turkeys. Okay. Um, and then after, when I bring it down, uh, what we do is we trim it, right? So we'll trim it in the same room, cold as hell. Like, we'll go all in there with fucking, like, we'll look like penguins in our trimming process. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is very important, is not to lose the cold, you know, the, 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 the cold uh, process. So after we trim, uh, we seal pack in the same room. Uh, I don't use CO2. Why? Because I'm not storing for long periods of time. Okay. So, so yeah, so that process definitely, um, I think you call it in a burping process, right? So, yeah, in the burping process, I, I don't, uh, you know, inject humidity. I'll, I'll, I'll put my Boveda packs in my, my things, and my Boveda packs are the 55%. Yep. I don't like to use the 60% because 60%, uh, I just feel like, you know, it's a big shock when you open the bag. Yeah. It, it could literally fluff yeah. up real easily so it won't get crunchy. One of the biggest threats here in, in competitions is since we have to ship the bud, uh, you really, if you don't have that nug crunchy, and since most of the places we compete are very humid, yeah. like in Cali, I remember yeah. I suffered a lot because, you know, the bud there, you know, it got humid right off the yeah. back. So any judge thought straight up, you know, it was badly dried or they yeah. thought, you know, oh, it doesn't grind good. You know, it's not our fault. It's because it's literally going into 90 plus humidity. Obviously, you know, cannabis is the most, you know, cannabis has the worst characteristic and it's, it, 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 it sucks up anything in the room. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, put wet cannabis next to drying cannabis. The next day you go in there, your dried cannabis is completely, you know, wet again because uh, it sucks up everything, especially um, there's also tricks to, you know, like if your cannabis loses smell, just put it in a Ziploc with some orange peels, you know, and the cannabis will suck up the orange peel, you know, and it'll taste and smell like orange peel. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes if you stick cannabis, like people who ship cannabis. So that's why most of Colombian cannabis and all those cannabis that are in the black market smell like booth and like coffee and like very bad stuff, you know, because they have to, you know, the, the they either hide it with, you know, coffee wrapping or in between all this yeah. stuff and cannabis takes that up so right. so the humidity definitely is a is something that i just work very easily with boveda uh-huh um and i use zero co2 like i said my my nugs are for my personal use and when i'm gonna compete for a cup uh it'll be pretty much like either a month or two months uh from the day that i finish curing yeah. right so how yeah. much do i cure for I cure for, I mean, I, for my personal use, I barely can cure and it sucks because, you know, once, if you grow for yourself, you're barely curing anything. Yeah. <laughs> but when I cure for cups, yeah, I definitely, I cure in, in the freezer. Really? Like I go at negative 22. Yeah. I, I cure in the freezer. I negative 22 and seal type bags. After dry. After your, your 14, yeah, 16 after dry. Your, wow. No way, dude. I'm going to fucking yeah. test that on one of mine for sure. <laughs> on these batches right now, dude, at Taganga. I definitely want to put in one or two at, at Taganga. There's going to be an amazing cup, guys, on 420 in Santa Marta. I've never been, and it's going to be fucking dope, dude. We're going to be hanging out with Carlos live at the cup. Dude, I'm thinking about setting up this live station at cups and asking every cup to give me a table or a private section where I can do interviews like this, but in person. And I think, yes. do you guys think that's a great and idea? Smoke the, and smoke. <laughs> do a live cata, yeah. exactly. So, like, um, would you guys be interested in seeing that at the next cup, me having a live session set up with Carlos, and we'll actually be doing a review like the judges do, going step by step, judging cat. <coughs> Sorry, judging cannabis and showing you the process. If you guys think that's dope, let us know. But I think it's time for the giveaway, bro. We've been on an hour, 14 minutes. People are itching to know how the fuck can I win some black tuna seeds. So <laughs> I think we tell them, dude. Um, before we, I'm going to go through the rules, and I got that part clear. But I want to know from you, Carlos, how many winners are we going to have um, from this from this giveaway? Let me see. Let me see how many packs I have here in my special pack suit. Ooh. Can you show us the pack? The little pack fucking thing? Or is it is it private? Yeah, private no show. Oh, oh no, I mean yeah, I just brought the actual the actual Perfect. Uh, yes, yeah, let's no, see the packs. You want, when you come when you come here to visit, I'm gonna take you to the Black Tuna headquarters so you can see more than 
you know, I, you, you're going to see more than pretty much 10 million seeds. What? Dude, 10 million fucking yeah. seeds. I've seen it on video. I can't wait to see it in person. So what packs do we got here? I'll let you take a look. Um, get ready, guys, because it is all it's right. giveaway so, time. We're going to talk about the rules here in just a second. Let's see what we're giving away, first of all. If you're just tuning in, welcome, guys, so for the giveaway. We, oh, uh, okay. A little bit more. Um, so here we have oh, Cabernet here I'll put you Sauvignon. Big. Okay, Cabernet Sauvignon. Ooh, who loves the sounds of that, guys? Those right, are so feminized? This is, uh, yeah, these are fem. These, this is French Macaroon times Nicole. So this French Macaroon is actually from a special edition drop that THC had at the 2019 Spanibus. And, you know, this one just packs resin like a like a monster like a hash makers passion is this right here and just to clear and up really quick a, a very... everyone in the usa for this giveaway is this also game on for today's giveaway yeah this is game on game on guys worldwide this is game on. They, we just have to we just have to cross our fingers and you know know that you know there's a slight chance that the man might want to be tricky but since it's one pack yep. it's very easy. perfect so guys us yeah. is definitely involved guys we're going to be talking about how to participate in just a sec let's uh See what else we got in store for us tonight. All right, so we got Selva Negra. Ooh, hoo, hoo. right with this Black Forest. Yes. So Black Forest is cinnamon cookies. So cinnamon cookies is from uh, Sin City Seeds from Las Vegas, yep. right? Um, yep. And times Nicole. So Beautiful. this one's also Packer. This one actually, this one impressed me right now in the hunt we did because it it was the one that packed the most next to the Sinfandel. So she'll give you pretty much, if you're growing her outdoors, she'll give you like 200 grams, 250 grams with 30 days of veg. Beautiful. And if you're growing her indoors, she'll give you at least 115 grams. Um, yeah, like a quarter pound she'll give you with 30 days of veg. You know, she's That's beautiful. amazing. And yes, Canada as well, guys. Canada as well. U.S. This is going worldwide. And like I said, we'll connect with the winners and we'll figure out how to get them to you. Um, but yes, this is worldwide. What do we got here? Sumerian Sunset? All right. So here we have... Samarian Sunset. I don't know why the hell the camera's sucking. Samarian yeah, Sunset. Sucking. That's the beautiful sunset that <laughs> so we've seen Samarian earlier, guys. Sunset, yeah. And that sunset that you see in the IG is actually one of our homies. Uh, you Cielo, know him. He's the guy from Cielo, Cielo Verde, Verde, of course. Yeah. He's killing it right now with the Samarian Sunset. Um, he He's the one that's gotten, you know, after us. He's the one that's got the most sought after cut in, in Colombia. And, you know, I love it. I, I don't like to to keep back on the genetics. I mean, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not, you know, like I don't like the people who don't give props to the actual breeders. So that's why some people are like, they don't give away cuts and clones because they're scared that people might rename them, yeah. you know, or cross them and, and steal people's work. Yeah. But here, like, the second that somebody finds a good seed clonal form, like, I never get mad if they share the love, you know. I think that's part of the process and part of the and I agree, bro. So, yeah, definitely the Marian Sunset is killing it, and that has to do with the Sunset Sherb. The Sunset Sherb in this cross is ridiculous. Beautiful, dude. Like, one of my favorite Sherbs in all the world. Like, I, and I, you know, I smoked Sherbs in Europe. I smoked Sherbs in the U.S., and this Sherb definitely takes it. You know, it takes it. Well, I smoked the last Sherb with was Canna Sewer Boys in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah, yeah. And when they got over here and they smoked this Sherb, they're like, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> we got it in the house, dude. Yeah, right on, bro. So we got those three fire okay. fire packs. Be oh, wow. KO. We got more, guys. We got KO. Oh, I was not expecting this. We are giving away fucking seeds, guys. We got KO. Again, at the end of this, once we finish and talk about the rules, there is going to be a video that's going to play, and it's about this strain. It's about KO. I've grown this. It turned out amazing. I'm going to show you at the end of this. It's like a one-minute video. Hang out after the live. So that's the next one in the giveaway. We got KO, boys. Tell us about that. KO. So this is my all-time favorite because KO is a plant that that the Kimbo mother is very dear to me. I found the Kimbo mother in Bogota in 2017. Um, and she, you know, she just grows like a silver ball of, you know, of resin. She has zero color. Uh, she, she was just completely silver, you know, like a, like a platinum silver cannabis strain with, you know, the turps were very on the, uh, it was like a very grapey, but not, not, on the on the candy side it was more like a like an original grape without candy you know and it had a hash undertone so it was very special why because like what we were talking about the other uh a second ago yep. those strains that have 
those very life-changing effects, right? So KO was a very medicinal plant. I mean, Kimbo was a very medicinal plant to me. And she was just one of those mothers that... She was the only mother that I brought to me, mm-hmm. to Santa Marta with me from Bogota when I came to work with Avicana. The awesome. rest I killed That says a lot. That says a lot. And that yeah, stream, that I've heard so many good things about extractions. As well, anyone who's into bubble hash, anyone who's into uh, doing rosin, that thing is supposed to be a killer for that. Yeah, 100%. And last but not least... From the native line, Ooh, hoo, hoo. Uh, I'm gonna give away two. So we got two salpicon. Awesome, right on double salpicon on that one, guys. That's our fruit salad Colombian version, delicious. Home Grow TV is gonna be popping it as well. So those whoever wins this, we get to grow it alongside each other. You get to see how mine turns out. I want to see how yours turns out. That one's really exciting, bro. So let's talk about the rules. First of all. We're going to be doing it in two different sections. One is based off of Instagram where we're going to be giving away half of these seeds. And the other one is based on YouTube. So the Instagram version. Well, how do you participate? It's very simple. All you got to do, guys, is we've shown this many times, is go to Black Tuna Seeds on Instagram and you're going to make sure you follow them. You're also going to go to Carlos Bibas and you're going to follow his account. Well, how do we know if you won or not? On the Black Tuna account, this picture right here. When you were talking to me about this beautiful black plant and how she grows, this is the Cherry West, right? Um, Your third picture that you guys posted. You guys got to go to this third picture right here and let us know why you want to win a set of the black tuna seeds. All right, guys? So on the Instagram part of the challenge, we're going to pick several winners. Half of the the seed packs are going to be chosen from Instagram by simply going and following black tuna. And then commenting on this picture. Black Tuna is a private account. It's going to you know, take a second for, for them to let you guys in. Oh, no way. You're showing it right on the screen, bro? Wait. I'm sucking. No worries, dude. Wait up. So um, this is going to be announced <laughs> next on next week's call on Tuesday, guys. Every single Tuesday we're going live. Last Tuesday, the Tuesday before that, and every Tuesday coming, we're going live. So make sure you're there. That's where we're going to announce the winners for the Instagram draw. Carlos, what do you got there on the screen, brother? So right here, I have a fresas con fresas crema. Fresas con crema. Oosh, delicious. Yeah, my girlfriend said in the background, she's like, Joe, she wants some fresas con crema right now, bro. So that's the... Oh, she wants it? Yeah, I'll send it to her. Tell her it's on the house. Well, she she thinks it's actually yeah, fresas con, con crema. She thinks it's like actual strawberries and cream. She's not a big smoker. She likes to partake every now and then with me. But <laughs> I think she thought you're giving away actual uh, strawberries and cream, bro. Pero Carlos dijo que no, mi amor, que te va a mandar unos fresas con crema, pero no de los que piensas. Okay. So for the first half of the... The house will smell like it. Yeah. So the first half, guys, really simply going following... CV420, Carlos Vivas Jr.'s account on Instagram, following Black Tuna and simply commenting on this Black Tuna post why you want to win, all right? So you have till next Tuesday to, uh, to figure out and to win one of these amazing packs, which there's a lot, all right? So the next, the other half of it is how to win on YouTube, guys. And that part, well, it gets even easier. What all you got to do, guys, is this video here, this live that you're watching, as soon as it's over is just comment below. And again, let us know why you wanna win or what you wanna do or why, what's your plans with Black Tuna, right? Which one maybe you wanna win, um, why you're inspired, why you wanna try some of these amazing Black Tuna seeds. Let us know in a comment, guys, simply on this video here that you're watching. As Soon as it ends, give us a nice little comment below. Not in the live chat, but down below, all right? Down below, down here. That's simply it, guys. Um, Bro, I want to thank you so much for coming on this week's live, bro. You dropped so many bombs. How many of you guys thought this was valuable tonight? Spending an hour with us, getting to listen to to Carlos, his information, his experience. How many of you guys thought that was valuable? For me, bro, it's been an honor, and I learned a lot. Um, I'm turning my fans off. I'm going to start curing differently. And fuck, bro, I'm coming out to visit you soon. Get over here, bro. You know, um... We've, we've had uh, always when we run into each other in the cups, you know, we're so busy with the external stuff. We can't even sit down and smoke a proper joint. You know, it hasn't happened. Yep. So, so we'll get the hell over here to my house and you already know we're going to have hell a lot yes, fun brother. and we're going to learn a lot. And 
and we're going to learn from each other and it's going to be great. Awesome, bro. Well, this last little question, bro, for you, anything you want to tell the interwebs that is watching this before we end this live um, to anyone watching this here on Homegrown TV? Yeah. Um, I want to say thanks to everyone. I want to tell, you know, anybody who's from Colombia watching this that, you know, we got a lot to give back to the world, that we are, you know, uh, we are one of the greatest cannabis dispensaries of the world and producers of the world and in, in, in mass production quality versus quantity you know it's, it's just the best in the world um and i want to thank everybody from canada i want to thank everybody from the u.s you know uh, the u.s is my hometown i grew up in miami i grew up in florida so i'm sure that anybody from the u.s anybody from europe anybody from canada who buys these seeds i'm sure that, that you're gonna like them uh, some terp, something's going to remind you of something you used to love plus better because it's going to be combined with the best of both worlds and it's going to be unique and exotic and it's going to have its own little twist and turn in Turks. So, so yeah, I'm very happy for the world to, to start enjoying these as well because I'm telling you that, that some of the things that I've seen here I have not seen anywhere in the world, you know, and I'm not saying that they don't exist. I'm saying that they're scarce yeah you know they're very scarce and 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 we could be one more door to get to them you know i'm not saying that we're the only one but we could be one more and imagine like right now but the, the original i have a female that that i'm waiting to drop because it's crazy it's called wasabi wasabi uh -huh. like the, the sushi wasabi yep. yeah and and i have this dream you know because it, it's definitely i'm sure it's one of those life-changing powerhouses you know, just like gelato was, just like anything is, just like GMO, just like any weird, you know, like cheetah piss, cat uh -huh. piss, you know, those strings that are very unique to their name. Yep. You know, uh, and I've looked, I've searched the whole web and I've searched, uh, you know, everything, like my homies who breed and everything. And I'm like, have you heard of wasabi? Have you had, you know, any strains with, with a wasabi terp? And they're like, nah, man, like, you know, there's some Afghans and there's some da that have like a spicy terp, but it's not wasabi. Like, uh -huh. and then I, I, I give them the jar and they're like, holy shit, bro. It's not even kidding. It's like straight on wasabi. Wow. Like, you're going to go eat sushi and you fucking get it to your face. <laughs> That's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, so, so the whole marketing behind it and the whole imagery behind it and, and the plant is completely green, hmm. <laughs> you know, so. It's also it go it lives by the name it lives by the color it lives by everything. Right. So it's very complete and and yeah. So I want to thank everybody who believes in this because they're gonna find life changing terps that are either gonna you know help them in their day by day or they're gonna either gonna cross that off the list be like okay I had that terp you know now I can move on and the next time I try it I can you know relate to it and say oh yeah I had that shit that probably comes from this 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 and this mm -hmm. you know. Um, and yeah, let's let's get it done. Let's have fun together, bro. I love everybody, and thank Dude. you for for your time and. and for You're your amazing. Love. You're amazing, and everyone here, honestly, it's been amazing. You guys have been fucking a great, great time. The chat's been popping. I fucking love reading everything from you guys and tuning in from all around the world. This is not possible with you guys being here. So. Thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Carlos, what I'm going to leave everyone here with, bro, is I'm going to put up the video of the KO. So for those of you who want to hang out, it's like I think I got a two-minute segment on how amazing this strain turned out. It's one of the packs going to be given away amongst some amazing strains, bro. Really, thanks, dude, for that for that gift to the community, Carlos. It's going to be amazing. Uh, and I, I've seen it like three times because it's definitely the best coverage we've had of a plan yet, so... Oh, so it's the first of many, bro. It's just the beginning. It. You guys are going to enjoy it uh, because, yeah, even the whole team enjoyed it. We're like, holy shit, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, we're also, you know, our plants pack. You know, that's an important, hey, look, I can't hear the What's What's up? Up, little neener. <laughs> little neener. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so yeah, she's, yeah, she's been in a lot of cannabis bros. <laughs> that's amazing. So, yeah, um, definitely, definitely. Um, I forgot what I was going to say because this kind of is hard as hell. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, my, my, the, 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 it stacks hard, you know, because yes. European strains, you know, they're getting right now, the U.S. strains, um, you know, for the production world, of course, they, they always look for something that stacks hard and gives good resin. But 
you know, for like the the cookies world is very popcorn nugs. Yeah. Like, you know, it doesn't it has long yeah. inner nodes and it's very resinous and it's very tasty, but it's it's you know, it doesn't have a lot of weight. Right. So the good thing about that black tuna line is it really lives up to the name of, you know, getting exotic terps out, but stacking, you know, weight and yes, you know, you know making sugar leaves and, and making resin and you know. You, you, I, it's all going to work for hash. You know, it just depends what your taste is. Yeah, it definitely works for that, man. It's fucking amazing. I'm showing everyone the picture of the video they're about to watch. So, again, Carlos, thank you so much for being here, bro. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And now, stay tuned because here is the Black Tuna Seeds KO. Last but not least is our Colombian cross from Black Tuna Seeds KO. She really did end as a picture-perfect plant. Happy, healthy, and just nice and colorful. She was super easy to grow with no issues at all along the way, and is a decent producer as well. Black Tuna Seeds is officially added to my approved seed bank list. If you're anything like me, you're always going to have an eye and an interest for land races, the grassroots of where our cannabis today really comes from. These guys are pioneering the space. And don't forget how many top strains come from Colombian genetics. I mean, just look at the High Times Top 40 list from 1977. It was absolutely packed with Colombian strains. So respect to these guys right here for keeping it alive. And the big question you're probably asking yourself, does KO make it into the mother room? The answer is no. But the reason is, is because I know there's just so many fire strains that I really want to test from these guys that I don't want to get ahead of myself and put something into the mother room too soon. Last but not least is our Colombian cross from Black Tuna Seeds, KO. She really did end as a picture-perfect plant. Happy, healthy, and just nice and colorful. She was super easy to grow with no issues at all along the way, and is a decent producer as well. Black Tuna Seeds is officially added to my approved seed bank list. If you're anything like me, you're always going to have an eye and an interest for land races, the grassroots of 